hi my name's Judy and welcome or welcome back to a new autumnal video so I'm so excited because you guys know that this is my favorite time of year I just thrive in autumn I love it so much I love all the spooky cozy reeds and just like woolly jumpers and pumpkin spice lattes and just all those nice vibes I just think something about this time of year is so magical and I always want to read so much more and I'm just so excited about my TBR like I cannot wait so go and grab yourself a big mug of something hot or if you're in the UK something cold because for whatever reason we are experiencing a heat wave which is just so not the vibes like it's ruining my autumnal vibes I'm literally wearing a long sleeve top and I'm sweating but this is not filled with a hot drink this is just filled with iced coffee because it's far too hot hopefully soon we get those nice cold rainy days because I hate warm weather <laughs> like I want the cold so I'm very excited for that but anyway go and grab yourself a drink and get cozy because I'm going to be talking about all of the books I plan to read in autumn and there are quite a lot to get through so if you guys haven't already seen it I did do a September reset video which was also like basically me getting ready for autumn decorating my library and my house for autumn i went and picked up some spooky books from the bookshop i made some super cute autumn pinterest boards and i also talked about all the books i'm going to be reading in september specifically so if you want to know like my september tbr or just want to see a fun little get ready with me for autumn video then you can head to that video i will link it down below but in this video i am going to be talking about all of the books i plan to read throughout like september october into november obviously this will not stay a permanent like tbr because as the months go on i get in different moods and i want to read different books and also there will be vampathon in october which i will do a whole separate video for and a whole separate tbr but basically vampathon is a spooky week of reading that i host every single year so you will hear more about that soon and i'm very excited but these are just some of the books i've picked out thus far so let's just get straight into it okay so i'm not gonna go in any specific order with these books i am literally just gonna grab them from my stack on the floor and talk about them also i might not go into like a super great amount of detail just because you can hear those in my tbr videos so in my reset video and then in my october tbr i will talk about the books a lot more in depth there but i'll just give you like a little brief overview of them and why i want to read them now just because i don't want this video to be too long because you guys know i love to put together these outrageously big tbr so that of course i will not manage to read but i just love doing it it just excites me and motivates me to read so yes anyway let's get into it so the first book we have is legends and lattes by travis baldry so this one i'm sure a lot of you guys have already seen all over like bookstagram booktok and booktube because it's very popular especially in like the bear months so i wanted to read this last year and i just didn't get to it and a couple of people recently have been talking about it who i follow and it's definitely like reignited my interest in this book again this is a cozy fantasy i don't know for sure if cozy fantasy is for me which i cannot believe i'm saying because i love all things cozy and all things fantasy but I just haven't had a good experience with it. But to be fair, I've probably only read like one cozy fantasy realistically, which was Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia for Fairies, of Fairies, whatever, by Heather Fawcett. And I didn't love that. But also I listened to the audiobook and maybe if I'd physically read it, I would have enjoyed it more. Or maybe it was just the timing, but I didn't love that book. And yeah, for some reason, I've now got this like thing about cozy fantasy that I won't like it. But I now realise that's very silly and I just need to get out of it and pick up a few cozy fantasies and what better time to do that than autumn so yeah we have this one this is a super wholesome story with friendship in here we have coffee of course and all of the cozy vibes it's basically a book that centers around found family fresh starts and lots of coffee which just sounds perfect to me and i don't really want to know too much more about the plot of this book i think i do just want to read it for like the vibes which probably sounds really bad but i just think this is one of those books that you read just to have that nice heartwarming feeling a kind of book that feels like a big hug that's the kind of vibe this book is giving me and that's kind of what i want so i'm so excited to read this i might even go down the audiobook route because i've heard very good things about it but yeah this is the book and this is the stunning fairy loot edition which i love i actually own three copies of this book so i do really need to get on with reading it okay so this next book i actually don't know a lot about i'm pretty sure though it is like a fantasy cozy YA story it could be adult but I feel like it might be a YA or new adult I'm actually not sure I bought this super randomly a while ago 
and I actually cannot remember the plot which I feel like is a good thing because again I quite enjoy going into books and not knowing a lot I just feel like it makes them less predictable for me and I just enjoy the element of surprise I get from reading something I don't know all that much about as long as the key things I love are there then you know I'll be vibing it's fine but that is the charm list and this is by Julie Abe and this is such a stunning cover on its own like I love this but in the little synopsis here it says at the bottom that the charm list sweeps readers away to a secret magical world complete with cupcakes and tea with added sparks of joy and an enchanted cottage where they can dance under the stars so I believe this is like a little romance so basically in this we're following Ellie who's a little bit of a wallflower she has like this little art Instagram she doesn't tell anyone about and she had this best friend and um, his name was Jack and he randomly snubbed her a couple of years ago and she's never quite gotten over it so she decides to make this like anti-wallflower list and she's going to do things to get out of her comfort zone and on this list is revenge on Jack and this ends up going horribly wrong and somehow she ends up stuck in a car with Jack driving to this magical convention and obviously from there I think a romance develops so I don't know if it's like witchy or anything but I think it just has like a magical element either way I'm super excited for this I just feel like this will be a lovely cozy story that's very light and fluffy to read at like the start of September and I feel like it'll be a nice quick read as well it's under 300 pages and yeah I'm just so excited about this one like I have a really good feeling about it so next we have another cozy fantasy but this one's witchy this is a very long title which is the very secret society of regular witches by Sangu Mandana and I believe the sequel of this comes out soon as well I've heard so many good things about this like so many quite a few of my friends have read this and absolutely adored it and I don't know why I still haven't gotten to it like I've had this since release and it's just sat on my shelf gathering dust and I love a witchy like romance kind of vibe and that's what this is it's a cozy story I think this also has like found family in it um I'm sure there's like a grumpy librarian called Jamie or something yeah so there's a librarian who's prickly and handsome called Jamie and then we have our main character as well who is Mika Moon and I love the fact that her name's Mika Moon like I'm just obsessed with that and it says that she's one of the few witches in Britain which again I love that and I think she ends up like looking after some kids or something as like a nanny it's something like that I think um so yeah this just has like a little bit of romance a little bit of magic and witchiness and I think again that found family kind of trope in here and I've just heard this is like a really cozy story and perfect to read in autumn and I just love those kind of vibes so I'm so excited for this and I love this edition because again look how stunning under the jacket is this is the fire loot edition and I just love it so much I'm obsessed with it oh I can't wait to read this like I think this is gonna be a five-star read and if it isn't I will cry <laughs> okay so this next one is kind of like a wild card for me because I typically don't really read a lot of horror and I don't think this is straight up horror but I know this author has wrote some horror novels I believe so I bought this when I was in Bath and since then I've seen a couple of people read this and give it a really good rating and say it's really really good and I thought it'd be perfect to put on my autumn TBR because it is kind of spooky and it's very short and I love a short story every so often and I'm planning to do like readathons and weekend readathons and all of that stuff and I figured this one would be perfect because you always need like a little short one just to add in especially maybe when your motivation's running low and you don't want to read like a big novel or something so this one I'm pretty sure I will get to but that is Thorn Edge by T. Kingfisher. So I've never read anything by this author. I can't remember what their other books are called. But I'm pretty sure they've done two or three. So in the synopsis it says, Meet Toadling. On the day of her birth, she was stolen from her family by the fairies. But she grew up safe and loved in the warm waters of Fairyland. Once an adult though, the fairy ask a favour of Toadling. Return to the human world and offer a blessing of protection to a newborn child. Simple, right? If only. Centuries later, a knight approaches a towering wall of brambles where the thorns are as thick as your arm and as sharp as swords. He's heard there's a curse here that needs breaking, but it's a curse Toadling will do anything to uphold. So yeah, this is like a twist, obviously, on kind of like Rapunzel. And I love fairy tales that are kind of reinvented in a darker, more sinister way. And just like reimaginings of fairy tales in general. I just find them really, really fun. And like I said, I love short stories. So I'm getting two things that I love in this book. So I'm pretty sure I will really enjoy this. This will just be like a fun, quick read. It is under 200 pages. It's only a little over 100. So 
so this will just be perfect to add in there whenever i feel like i just need something quick to read so very excited for this and i'm also obsessed with this cover i love the color palette like it's just so pretty the purples gorgeous okay so this next one again super excited about this and that is a witch's guide to fake dating a demon by sarah hawley this is a spooky rom-com and i love spooky rom-coms they're one of my favorites like just something about them is just so comforting and this one i think i got sent by the publisher a while ago and i've been saving it for this time of year and it's finally time to pick it up and i love how on the back here it says marielle spark knows not to trust a demon but what's a witch to do when she's accidentally bound for one so yeah this is going to have like false proximity i think they're probably going to have to go on some kind of journey to figure out what's going on why they're bound how to break it but somewhere along the way they probably fall in love and i'm assuming obviously there's fake dating in here so this takes all the boxes for me and i'm very excited about it i'm excited to go in and not know a lot about the synopsis either because i just i don't know i kind of just want to go into it not knowing a lot like i just feel like i'm gonna love this either way and i'm expecting very good things and i've seen a lot of good reviews for this book so yeah very very excited about it we love a spooky rom-com and speaking of spooky rom-coms we have which you're gonna do which is by avery flynn this is another witchy little romance and ever since i read the x hex a few years ago witchy romances have had a special place in my heart i've never found a book sadly that has the same feeling that that book does but i'm hoping one day i will like there's got to be some more witchy rom-coms out there that live up to the same level as the x hex like that one i just adored so much and i've read a lot of good witchy rom-coms but nothing that's kind of made me feel the way that one does and i'm still searching for that feeling so i'm hoping this one will be the one and this one says basically it's an unlucky witch and her know-all nemesis they must team up in the first of a new spicy romantic comedy series so it's kind of like hate to love kind of enemies to lovers vibes and we have witches and i think basically they have to work together to save i don't know if it's her family um and like be able to get rid of these like evil forces at play so it kind of does remind me of the x hex a little bit with obviously it's not second chance romance like the x hex but those vibes of like they don't particularly like each other and they have to go on this quest together to kind of like you know defeat evil that kind of vibe i love that in books and i just feel like this one is gonna be so fun so yeah i'm very excited for this one and the floppiness is a 10 out of 10 very very excited and very much love this cover as well okay so this next book i don't really know what category it falls into i believe this is kind of like a mystery thriller supernatural paranormal cozy kind of vibe but i want to read this and i've heard a lot of good things about it and it's just been sat on my shelf for a while so this will be my first book by this author i believe and that is spells for forgetting by adrian young so yeah i don't know a lot about this and because i've heard it's like got magic murder and mystery in it i feel like i don't really want to read into the synopsis again because I love going into these kinds of books with absolutely no expectations and no inkling as to where the story is going to go. I just find, again, that it's less predictable and more thrilling that way. But I know this is, like, really atmospheric and it's set in a small town and I think it's something to do with, like, lost love. So those sound perfect to me they sound perfect for autumn and this cover as well just screams autumn so this one i cannot wait to read and i'm sure i'm gonna love it i don't really read a lot of like thrillery murder mystery kind of books anymore but this will be a nice one and probably maybe will get me into like the kind of thrillery vibe i don't know um but yeah i'm very excited about this one and I'm predicting this one's going to be like four or five stars. So next we have my Patreon buddy read book for September, which I'm so excited about. So if you didn't know, I do have a Patreon, which is linked down below. And every single month we do a buddy read where we choose a book and then we all read it together. And we have a Discord where we discuss it. And I also film a reading vlog for it for patreon every single month so if you were interested in joining us you can head to the link in the description box but the book we're reading this month is one dark window by rachel gillick this one i am very excited to read but also very nervous because so many people have been saying this is one of the top three which basically if you haven't seen that it's like a silly little like audio trend on like book talk where it's like i've read the big three which is like fourth wing divine rivals and then this book and i really enjoyed fourth wing and divine rivals so if this is like up there with them then i feel like i will love it but it also means that i now have a lot of high expectations for this book 
so hopefully they're met but this is a YA gothic fantasy we have like monsters in here and like dark magic and romance and it says here our main character is a maiden who must unleash the monster within to save her kingdom so I love the sound of that I am very excited I love a good gothic fantasy and like I said I've heard nothing but good things about this one everybody loves this book and i'm pretty sure i'm going to i did very briefly start it i'm only 10 pages in so we'll see but yeah i'm very excited for this like i have very very high expectations and i'm so excited to film a reading vlog for it because if it does become a new favorite then i'll have a nice vlog for it um but yeah this one i just cannot wait to get to and yeah if you did want to join us then you can head to the description box for the link to my patreon but this is our buddy read book of the month and one I will be starting, well, continuing to start immediately. Okay, so next we have another spooky romance. So this one is, I think, basically, from what I remember, a romance with a ghost. I think is the vibe, but I could be wrong. And that is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. So a few people recently have been reading this and giving it five stars and raving about it. And it's made me want to add it to my TBR and bump it up the list because I feel like I really will enjoy this. Again, I don't know a lot about it, but I'm pretty sure we follow someone who's like a ghostwriter and she ghostwrites like romantic novels, but then she goes through a horrendous breakup. And obviously she's in no mood to be writing about romance and she's struggling to try and finish this like book she has to do it's just not looking good for her and she has like this new editor called Benji and she asked for an extension because obviously she's not in the right headspace and he's like no he's a bit of like a dick to her but then one night she gets home and Benji is there as a ghost on her doorstep <laughs> and yeah I think somehow they begin to fall in love and I don't really know how this is gonna work out because he's a ghost but I guess we'll see um I'm intrigued by that element and it sounds very unique so again I've had a lot of good things very excited for it and I am predicting this one will be a five star read, but we shall see. Okay, so next we have a graphic novel. Now I will be putting on a lot more graphic novels and manga on my TBR, but I will just read them like as I am in the mood for them throughout the month. But one I definitely will be getting to is Hollow. I think I did buy this like the end of last year, but I've been saving it for spooky season. And all I know about this is it's a retelling of the Headless Horseman and Sleepy Hollow, obviously. And that's kind of all I know. So I'm very, very excited to read this. I just love a good graphic novel and I think this will be so fun because obviously Sleepy Hollow like is a classic and yeah very very excited for this I feel like it will be a really fun and quick read to add into my TBR then we do have another graphic novel which is Over My Dead Body by Sweeney Boo um I believe Jan read this last year and really really enjoyed it and all I know about this it's like kind of dark academia witchy vibes set at school I think there's like a disappearance or a murder or a mystery or something and there's witches that's kind of all I know but I don't need to know anymore if it's witchy and it's a graphic novel I am going to read it and I'm very very excited plus the art style in here is just so beautiful and just screams autumn so I'm very very excited to read this one okay so next we have a wilderness of stars by Shaya Earnshaw so this one I will probably read in early November because for some reason I just associate Shaya Earnshaw's books with like late autumn or beginning of winter I read The Wicked Deep and Winterwood by Shaya Earnshaw and I adored both of them her writing is just absolutely incredible it's very atmospheric and like spooky and eerie and just like so descriptive and lyrical like I honestly love it it's kind of similar to like Rachel Griffin's writing so if you like Rachel Griffin's writing you would definitely love Shaya Earnshaw's and vice versa this one I was very very kindly gifted by Ord I think is how you pronounce the name I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong but this is the lovely lovely person's name here and um, they very kindly gifted this to me and I'm so excited to pick it up so I don't actually know a lot about this one, weirdly enough, but I want to read it because it is by Shaya Earnshaw and I am going to go into this and not knowing the synopsis. I really do want to go into one of her novels and be totally surprised by where it takes me. I just enjoyed both of her other books so much that I feel like with this one it would just be a really fun experience to go into this and just see what happens. I don't really know much about this, but I know again it will have those kind of like kind of like paranormal supernatural vibes a little bit spooky and atmospheric cozy and dark all of those different things I just feel like it will be really really fun um so yeah this one will be probably on my November TBR and I am predicting five stars for this because 
She's never let me down. So speaking of Rachel Griffin, we have Bring Me Your Midnight, this one. I cannot wait to read this. This is Forbidden Love. And I love Rachel Griffin. She is one of my all-time favourite authors. I've read Wild as the Witch and Nature of Witches. Absolutely adore both of them. Five-star reads. So good. They're basically all YA romances with, like, witchy vibes and just truly like poetic lyrical stunning and atmospheric is the best way to describe them i love her writing so much and i cannot wait to read this one and this one is a forbidden romance and she's a witch that lives on this island and i think there's like an arranged marriage between her and someone who lives on the mainland to try and like secure them and like to try and basically like tamper down with the fact that like the mainlanders see these group of like witches as like a threat so this arranged marriage is like a political move i think to try and like calm that down a bit and like secure you know their future make sure they're safe and all that good stuff and basically they release their magic into the ocean on a full moon to try and like appease the mainlanders but our main character misses this midnight ritual and now she's got all this magic like welling up inside her and she ends up meeting this guy called wolf who claims to be someone who practices dark magic in another coven and he's like basically encouraging her to like use her magic and he's basically like teaching her forbidden magic we have a forbidden romance and it's basically a story about like where you kind of draw the line between love and duty so yeah i'm very very excited to read this i love a good forbidden romance and he sounds like a bad boy and we have forbidden magic so all of the things i could possibly want and again i'm sure this is going to be five stars i am so excited to read it we'll be picking this up very soon and i just love rachel griffin okay so this next book makes me kind of sad i'm not gonna lie but it is because it's the last book in a series and it's a series i really really adore I have been reading it very, very slowly over the last several years. I read the first book many, many years ago. It's one of my favourite books of all time. And then I read the third book last October. And I think the second book, the October before that. And I've been saving this one for so long. But the time has finally come. And that is Carrie Maniscalco's capturing the devil. So these books are just inherently gothic and spooky to me. They feel paranormal and supernatural, but they actually aren't. They're basically like contemporary thrillers, but they're YA and just incredible. The romance as well is so good. In the first book, it's kind of like Rivals to Lovers vibes, um, but Audrey Rose and Thomas Cresswell just have my heart. They're one of my favourite fictional couples, and this one is just going to be amazing. I just know it. So basically, all of the books, we do follow these two characters. It's very gothic. It's set, I think, in like Victorian London, but each one, they've like travelled somewhere else. So this one is set in America. Um, and the way that the third book ends and then there's a novella you can read, things are intense. And I basically think they're trying to like find this serial killer in Chicago, I think is where they are. So yeah, they're trying to track down this serial killer, but everything appears to look like it's a supernatural force, but they have to kind of prove that it isn't. And basically like Audrey Rose is a, what's the word? I can't remember what she's actually called, but she basically like works with dead bodies and like figuring out how they died and stuff. So basically every story is like a murder mystery and there's a bit of romance in there and it's just very high stakes. Very, very good. I love these books so much. And I'm sad that the series will be coming to an end with this one, but it is about time that I did read this. So yeah, I'm very excited for this one. We'll likely be having this one on my October TBR, probably a Vampathon pick as well. But yeah, I just can't wait to be back with Audrey Rose and Thomas Cresswell. I love them so much. Then we have Carissa Broadbent's Slaying the Vampire Conqueror. And this one's a Mortal Enemies to Monster Lovers story, apparently. So I don't think it's related to Serpent in the Wings of Night but it could be set in the same world, I'm not entirely sure. But I think this is one of those ones where basically she's supposed to go and kill him, and I think he maybe is supposed to kill her, and for whatever reason, that doesn't happen, because I think they fall for each other. It's kind of giving me, like, Bridge Kingdom vibes, but make it, like, vampires, and I love the Bridge Kingdom. That is such a good enemy to lovers. So yeah, I believe this is enemies to lovers. It says here, fierce heroines, inhuman heroes, love the content, the tides of fate so yeah this is a vampire romance story and i don't know much else more than that but i don't feel like i need to i am very excited for this one i feel like this is obviously a perfect read for autumn because it's vampires i really love serpent in the wings of night by chris broadbent wasn't a huge fan of door of no worlds but i do really like her writing and i feel like this one will be really good because i think this is just like 
a standalone and that it's going to be very like high stakes intense but highly like romanticy vibes so yeah very very excited for it here for all the vampire books and i'm sure this one will not disappoint me so i've got two more books to show you guys and then that is the end of my very big tbr so we have avila roth's blood mercy book one I don't know a whole lot about this but I do know it's like forbidden romance and enemies to lovers and we have a vampire in here and a human girl who's trying to like rebel against her father and stop him from doing something bad so she enlists the help of a vampire I think and they form an alliance to try and save her kingdom but then fall in love which is like forbidden and yeah there's like a lot of books in this series but this was very kindly gifted to me by Vanessa so thank you so much Vanessa I am so excited to read this I have heard this is a really good fantasy romance and again I'm just here for the vampire vibes and this cover is just truly beautiful like i'm obsessed with this cover i'm really hoping i love this because i've already bought all the other books in the series so it will be very awkward if i don't love this but i feel like i will so yeah i'm gonna be reading this one hopefully but it is quite a chunky one but i mean i feel like if i really get into it i will just binge my way through this book and then the last one i just had to put on here for funsies because it's not an autumn tbr without this book and I've never actually finished it which is so bad and I know that I will love it because the movies are like my guilty pleasure I just love them but I can't believe I've still not read the books and that is Twilight with Stephanie Meyer so I did start reading um, Midnight Sun I got a good ways into that but never finished it and that's obviously Twilight from Edward's point of view and I've only ever read a small amount of this years ago so I thought it was about time I did make my way through the actual books and I just feel like these will give me those really nostalgic cozy vibes that I just kind of want during autumn and yeah like it's twilight I mean do I need to say any more than that I'm not even going to go into what this is about because I feel like it's a given um but yeah I, I'm going to put this on my TBR and maybe I'll finally read it we shall see um I remember seeing Katie from Katie's reading reading this last year and it definitely motivated me to pick it up so maybe I finally will um but I'm going to add it to my TBR just for the fun of it and we'll see if I do get to it but that does conclude all of the books for my autumn TBR I hope you guys did enjoy this video like I said I will definitely alternate between various books across the next two months and I will be doing separate TBR videos for each month I'm bringing TBRs back because I do enjoy them but I am still a mood reader at heart so I always stray away from them but it does give me some kind of motivation and gives me an idea of what kind of books I might want to read throughout the month. So yeah, I hope you guys did also get some recommendations from this video. Let me know in the comments if you're planning to read any of these books or if you have already read them. Please let me know your thoughts. I would be really excited to know what you thought of them. And let me know what is on your TBR this month. I love seeing everyone's spooky TBRs. And it's also a really good way to get book recommendations. So if you do have a TBR planned, leave it down below in the comments or if you have recommendations also let me know those if you did make it this far in the video leave an autumnal emoji in the comments and please do give this video a big thumbs up it really helps me out and i do appreciate every single comment that i get it's so fun seeing what you guys are reading or how you're doing and just getting to chat to you so yeah i might not get back to the comments straight away but i promise i will get back to them and they truly do mean a lot to me the fact you take time out your day to leave a comment is just so nice to me so thank you if you do decide to leave a comment um but yeah anything i have mentioned i will leave down below in the description box so you'll find the link to my patreon that's where you'll find our monthly buddy read you can also find a monthly readathon there live shows a discord channel we have a spooky discord channel which is very exciting and i also upload exclusive videos so i recently posted this video which is a come autumnal shopping with me and a big haul so i basically went to like tk maxx home sense and all of those good places bought a ton of autumnal and spooky decor and did a big haul and there's also some clothes as well so if you are interested in that you can head to my patreon but those are the sorts of things you can expect there so that will be linked down below there'll also be the link to all of my social media if you did want to follow me on my like bookstagram or book talk or any of that stuff and i will also be linking the september reset video down below in the description as well but yeah thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you're all safe and well i hope you're reading lots of good spooky books and i'll see you in the next one bye